Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my C++ series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about virtual functions in C++. Over the last few episodes, we've been talking about classes and object-oriented programming and inheritance and all that stuff and virtual functions are really, really important to that whole concept. Virtual functions allow us to override methods in subclasses. So for example, let's say we've got two classes, A and B. B is derived from A, meaning that B is a subclass of A. If we create a method in the A class and mark it as virtual, we have the option of overriding that method in the B class to get it to do something else. As always, this is best explained via an example, so let's take a look. I'm going to create two classes here. One's going to be called Entity, which is going to be our base class, the only thing this entity class is going to have is a public method called getName, which is going to return a string. Because this is just an entity, we're just going to return the word entity. Next, we're going to create another class, player, which is going to be a subclass of the entity class. We're going to add a little bit more to this class. Firstly, we're going to actually store a name. Then we're going to provide a constructor, which allows us to specify a name. And then we're going to give it a method called getName, which in this case is going to return this name, the name that is the member. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at how we might use this setup. Let's say that we create an entity here, and then I'm going to try and print the getName from that entity. Then I'm going to create a player. I'll call this player Cherno. And I'm going to print the player's name as well. And I'm not gonna bother deleting these objects because the program terminates anyway, there's no, there's no use in doing that. Let's hit F5 to run our code. And if we look at the result, all right, cool, looks pretty good. We've got entity, we've got Cherno printing, everything seems fine. However, everything that we've written here so far will crumble if we decide to use the concept of polymorphism. If I start referring to the player as if it was an entity, that's where we run into problems. So for example, if I create a variable here called entity, which is actually going to be assigned to P, which is of course a pointer to a player type, right? So I've still got my player. However, now I'm just referring to it as an entity. If I print this, so I'll do entity.getName. If I run my code here, you can see we get entity printing. However, we would of course expect player because even though we're referring to this entity as an entity pointer, it is actually a player. It's an instance of the player class. Possibly a better example is if we had a print name function which took in an entity. And then here we just called C out entity get name and I'll replace these with print name E and print name P. So now we've got seemingly one function which takes in any kind of entity, of course. So you can see that we don't get any compile errors when we try and pass in P because P is an entity, right? Player is an entity. And all we're doing here is calling the entity's get name function, which we would expect to be this get name for our entity, and then this get name for our player. However, if we run our code, you can see that we get entity printing twice. Why is that? That seems incorrect. The reason this is happening is because if we just declare our functions normally, our methods normally inside our classes, then when it comes time to call a method, it's going to call whatever method belongs to the type. And of course, if we look at this print name function, it takes in an entity pointer, meaning that when we call the get name function inside entity, it's going to look at entity and just call get name. That's it. However, we want C++ to somehow realize that, hang on a minute, the entity that I passed into here is actually a player. So please call this get name function. That is where virtual functions come in. Virtual functions introduce something called dynamic dispatch, which compilers typically implement via a vtable. A vtable is basically a table which contains a mapping for all of the virtual functions inside our base class so that we can actually map them to the correct overridden function at runtime. In the future, I'm gonna do a whole in-depth video on how vtables work and all that, so stick around for that if you're interested. But to keep it simple, all you basically need to know is that if you want to override a function, you have to mark the base function in the base class as virtual. So let's go back to our code and I'm just simply going to add the word virtual to the front of this get name function that is in our base class, in our entity class. It might not seem like much, but this basically tells the compiler, hey, generate a V table for this function so that if it's overridden, you can point to the correct function. With this change, let's hit F5 to run our code. And look at that. We've got entity and Cherno printing correctly now. Another thing that we can do that was introduced in C++11 is actually mark this overridden function with the keyword override right over here. 
This isn't required. Of course, you can see that we just ran our code without that and it worked fine. However, you should still do this because first of all, it makes your code a little bit more readable since we now know that this is actually an overridden function, but also it just helps us a little bit with preventing bugs due to like spelling mistakes and all that. Like for example, if I type get name with a lowercase n, you can see we get an error because there's no such function in the base class for us to override. Or if we try and override a function that isn't marked as virtual, you can see it also gives us an error. So it's just something that helps us out. Okay, so that's basically what a virtual function is. Virtual functions aren't free though, unfortunately. There are two runtime costs associated with virtual functions. Firstly, we have the additional memory that is required in order for us to store that B table so that we can dispatch to the correct function that includes a member pointer in the actual base class that points to the V table. And secondly, every time we call a virtual function, we have to go through that table to determine which function to actually map to, which is an additional performance penalty. And because of these costs, some people just prefer not to use virtual functions at all. Honestly, in my experience, I've never encountered this to be so costly that, that it would make any difference if I stopped using virtual functions. So personally, I use them all the time without any issue. Maybe if you're on some embedded platform which has absolutely terrible performance and every CPU cycle counts, maybe then avoid virtual functions. But otherwise, I really can't tell you not to use them because of performance because because it's just such a minimal impact that you probably won't notice it at all. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on virtual functions. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.